Hello and welcome to this video on internal sources of finance. Let's consider you are starting a business. Now in order to start a business you're going to need to buy a premises, you're going to need to employ some staff, buy some stock, essentially you're going to need some money to get started. Well where's that money going to come from? Well you might badger your parents, maybe you'd sell something that you already own, perhaps you might pay these guys a visit, or if you're really desperate crack open some of your piggy banks. Ultimately you need some money if you're going to get started or expand your business. And we call that sources of finance. Sources of finance are the options available to a business when seeking to raise funds to support future business actions. For a startup that might be generating money to establish the business or for an existing business it might be to fund growing the business or maybe introducing a new strategy like relocating to a different premises. In this video we're going to look at internal sources of finance and in particular personal savings, retained profit and asset sales. When considering sources of finance there are two broad categories internal and external. Internal sources of finance are funds from within the business whereas external are funds that come from outside of the business. In this video we're focusing on internal sources of finance finance of funds that come from within the business. Let's start to work through our three types of internal finance. The first one is owner's capital or personal sources and that's when an entrepreneur invests their own money in a business. An owner's capital is how much the owner has invested in the business. So owner's capital shows us the proportion of what the business owns, the assets, that are owned by the business owner rather than paid for by an external source. And remembering here that assets are items owned by the business and creditors are people who have lent the business money. Typically entrepreneurs might source this from cash savings they have or investments they've made previously. Perhaps if they've been made redundant many entrepreneurs use that as an opportunity to set up a business inheritances, personal credit cards or maybe taking out a big loan against their house and then using that money to start a business. For example the entrepreneur who set up this business used earnings they'd received from a previous job as a management consultant to start their startup. So what's good and bad? Well the benefits of using your own savings you don't have to repay anyone, there are no interest charges, you maintain control of the business, can be motivational because you've really got your own money on the line so you're going to try hard and there's no lengthy application procedures. On the downside you might only have a limited amount so it also might threaten maybe your personal finances or if you have a family and you're remortgaging then personally it might have an, an effect on them. Let's move on now to retained profits. Retained profits are profits kept within a business from profit for the year, a key term you might want to look up and that helps finance future activities. So this is important and significant for businesses that are established and have been running for a while so they do have previous profits that they can retain, keep and then use to fund any future uh, projects or expansion. So for example if a business made a profit in year one of £10,000 they could use that retained profit to fund maybe buying a new factory for £10,000 in year two. The benefits, it's relatively cheap, although it's not free, there is an opportunity cost. What could you have done instead with that profit? Perhaps you could have paid it out to shareholders. It's very flexible in that management can control how much is reinvested. Shareholders can have an opinion on how, what the proportion that should be used. And again, it doesn't change the ownership of the company because it's coming from uh, profits made previously. It's not about changing the ownership of the business. Downsides, well there might be a danger that you hoard cash, try and retain and, and keep hold of lots of profits rather than using it and secondly shareholders might prefer dividends rather than actually using that money to, to reinvest and retain it within the business. The final internal source of finance is sale of assets and this involves selling items of value that are owned by the business and normally here we're not talking about kind of stock 
or, or anything like that. We're normally talking, about, normally talking about non current or fixed assets. So, assets that are likely to stay in the business for a long period of time machinery, vehicles, those kinds of things. So, these assets can be sold in order to get an immediate injection of cash and then prov provide finance that could be used for an alternative purpose. So, for example, if a business had, a, had an old factory that they weren't using anymore, they might consider selling it. Would you sell your main assets? No, probably not. But if you had a spare asset or one that was being underutilized, then possibly selling it and using that finance to fund something else would be a sensible suggestion. Again, the benefits, no interest charges, you don't have to pay anything back. If the asset is obsolete, not being used or out of date, then it might as well sell it and, and use that finance. Often it can be quite a large lump sum and it's an immediate cash injection. However, if you decide later on you actually, you know what, we didn't need that factory or we didn't need those vans and you've sold them, then you might have to lease them, rent them back in the future so it could cost you in the long run. You're not able to use that asset in the future and this is really only a one-off option. You can only sell an asset once. So for example here, the supermarket chain, if you read at the bottom, they've been selling off uh, some of their land that they had earmarked for new supermarkets to raise millions of pounds to provide uh, an internal source of finance that they could then use for whatever purpose they wanted. So we've looked at internal sources of finance in this video and in particular the three types at the bottom.